Hey guys, here we are with the new ESM Sea Fury. Um, it's a 30 to 40 cc plane, uh, and it's got like an 80, 81 inch wingspan. Uh, it says it comes out about 17 to 18 pounds. Uh, beautiful airplane. The graphics looks good. The um, everything looks uh, really nice on the airplane. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and put a cockpit kit in this one. Where we're gonna, um, I'm gonna get it all ready and show you where we're gonna cut and uh, where we're gonna, where we are and how we're gonna install the. Uh, uh, the few the cockpit itself um, From looking on the inside. It does not look like we're gonna have to do any cutting of anything And we might be able to get the whole cockpit in there without doing um, Without doing anything as far as uh, moving servos or anything like that So um, I'm gonna get it ready and we're gonna move along with the cockpit kit Okay, guys, I'm gonna show you how we're gonna start cutting on this uh, I'm gonna start with leaving a, about a quarter inch um, from the side here um, if, if you're looking down on the plane this edge here is, is slightly rounded it, it comes around a, uh, just just barely so what I'm gonna do is I've got this is 3m tape it's quarter inch wide and what I've done is um, I've got from right here in the center I made sure I laid my tape on there so that it's a quarter inch here and then it overlaps this way. So my line inside here is straight, okay? Did the same thing this side. At the widest point here is where my quarter inch tape touches the side and it overlaps on the outside here. You can see how it tapers around, or I hope you can. Anyway, but it leaves me a straight line. We want that straight line so we can have our cockpit um, fit right up against it nice and tight. So um, when you put this down, your the edge of your quarter inch tape should touch right here in the middle and then it overlaps the side out here. And um, you can see, I've uh, hopefully you can see, uh, maybe the light's shining right, but I've taken, marked it with a pencil and where I will end up cutting. Um, we, you know, in the end, I may end up taking off, um, making this less than a quarter inch wide, but it's easier to take off more than try to add it back. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this cut out. I'm gonna cut it all the way across, flush with this, um, um, where it's 90 degrees, where this would come down and go 90, we'll cut it there, and I'm gonna cut it um, back across here so um, we're leaving this part of the bulkhead on both. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and cut those uh, and, and just cut that square out to begin with, and then we'll move along. Okay guys, here we are back at the plane. I got the uh, cockpit um, pretty much ready to be installed. Um, I'll go over how much I cut out and everything, say, but I wanted to show you how we prepare the cockpit to go in the, in the fuselage itself. Anyway, um, when you get the um, the main part of the few, the cockpit, it'll look like this. It may have a little bit of flashing up here, a little bit down here. You just cut that off pretty close all the way around. Okay, um, what you first need to do, you need to take and um, get you a, a ruler and a, a, a pencil. I'm gonna show you some measurements to make. All right, this is the base of the cockpit, this is the rear, and uh, you, you can go from where this uh, seat pedestal is. Anyway, from this line right here, this is where it, it starts angling down. From there, you're gonna measure over three quarters of an inch. All right, both sides, from there down three quarters of an inch. And we're gonna mark it all the way up even with this, so it's about almost four and a half inches long. All right, then, we're gonna come from that corner here up one inch on both sides and make a mark. And we're gonna, uh, we're gonna use that line here in a few minutes. All right, on the top, now once again, this is the rear and this is the front. On the front, from this corner, we'll mark over one and a half inches and make a mark. And it, it mainly pertains to the front edge here. All right, and from the back forward, we're gonna mark at one half inch, okay? I'm gonna show you how we cut these out. Anyway, you can see that um, this, when it's pulled, it's got this piece up like this. What you end up doing is you end up cutting it and you leave as much as you can until you get to the very end and you come to, up to that corner and cut that, cut that off, cut it up and then off this way. And you're gonna do the same side to the front and we're gonna do this, end up doing this to both sides, all right? What you end up doing up here is where that one and a half is, you cut straight across and you just cut it even right along that top. You want to leave just a little bit of the rounded, maybe a one thirty second, and cut straight across. And then do the half inch the same way. All right. That that prepares you 
to um, put this this prepares that as far as being cut out and I'll show you what to do next with that all right now you've got two side panels that are going to go in this location I'm gonna show you how to cut those out you'll get a piece that looks like this okay um, if you try to pull just a plain square I had to, do, put, to put this on the end if you try to pull a plain, plain square or a rectangle it'll leave big webbing and I can fix it with this anyway what you're going to do is from the top piece, the long piece here, you're going to measure down one inch and draw a line. And you can do that same from the bottom, one inch up and draw a line, okay? And then the top side, you're going to come up here and from this corner inward, three quarters of an inch, you're going to mark it two places and draw a line, all right? You're going to do the same thing to both sides. What you're doing is making two panels, all right? And then once we get that done, we're going to take some real fine scissors and we'll cut along that line, cut it out, cut along this line, and then we're going to leave, we're going to leave this angle here. That gives us strength. We're going to leave that angle, but we're going to cut right down that line right there, right down the center, and we're going to remove this triangle piece here, okay? We're going to do that on both sides. We'll come up and remove that triangle piece. So what you'll end up with is a piece that comes up and down and it'll have the angles. It'll have the angles on the end. That'll give you a little bit of strength. And um, so it'll look just like that. It'll be like a 90 degree. So we won't get those cut out. All right. Um, I got to get a couple things together and I'll show you how we're going to prepare this. Uh, prepare the base for the um, the sides here. So I'll get this cut out. I'll finish cutting uh, the, the base out and then we'll move along. Okay, here we are with the same parts and uh, I've got the ends cut out like I was describing earlier. These are our side pieces. Anyway, what I've done is with the marks we had on the um, cockpit base itself, uh, I kind of evolve how I do the cockpit kits. Some of them I used to put uh, mold in the, um, these, these things here. But these are a lot more uh, crisp and, and, and make it work better than trying to mold those pieces in times. So the kit will not include, this is quarter by quarter balsa. It won't include that. It's really, you should have it if you build airplanes laying around. So it's just, uh, these are uh, right at maybe four and a quarter, uh, four inches long. Uh, they're just a little bit short on each end because you don't want them to stick out um the sides uh, you can see that they're they're probably about an eighth inch on each end of it but anyway you want to glue these on the this side of the uh, line on both of those so once we um bend this up here these pieces will fit in now something i did on this cockpit i've always said you know, i've got a big wide piece of pliers uh, uh, a set of pliers that I, I fold these up with and most of the time I don't say glue that there I just leave that option and it gives a little bit of um, play inside and you usually can't see that seam you know once the cockpit's built but on this one so the the dash will fit correctly what I'm gonna tell you to do is run you a bead of CA in there and then come in here and crimp that and just hold it uh, you have to put you have to what I generally, what I did on mine was I run the B to C A in there and just kind of, uh, um, or you could put, hold it this way and run the B to C A on it just to hold it in place that way. You need, and then you have to move up a little further and do the front side, and you want to do both that way. And once that's done, what that allows this to do, this can be glued to the um, top and bottom and make you a 90 degree. And this is a lot more rigid than some of the stuff I've done in the past. So anyway, um, once you have got it to this point, you will go ahead and run a bead of glue and, and crimp both of those and lock them in place. And that'll make your whole cockpit body. It'll make it a little bit harder to paint. You'll have to shoot paint from the back and from the front, but we want to get this all framed up before we start painting on it. Anyway, um, well, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to get this glued, and I'll get these two pieces in place, and then we'll move along from there. Okay, guys, here we are at the plane again. I've, I've got this cut out like I was talking about before. Uh, cut this flush across the back here, and then you've got the quarter inch at the center, and it kind of tapers a little bit on each side, but it fits really well in there. Um, one thing I did do 
is I went ahead and cleared out um, this went straight across I went ahead and cleared it out and left about an eighth inch of lip there it comes over and goes down about an eighth inch all the way across okay and then you need to feel inside here and sometimes on this seam here when they lay the glass it'll be a big bead there you may have to take a Dremel tool and just clean that bead out about a quarter inch and just make it where it's smooth across here and be careful cleaning that out because you don't want to uh, weaken this here but you can this mine does not have a big bead there and it, it, it feels it's good uh, just sometimes there will be they'll have an extra piece of uh, extra glob of uh, fiberglass or the resin there so you just have to make sure you clean that out anyway um, <clears throat> what I do I've got the uh, cockpit um, ready to um, put in place uh, I did want to show you um, my initial measurements now this is going to be a change and I hope y'all watch the video all the way through is um, from the front back it's going to be 1 and 11 sixteenths back from the front corner back of 1 and 11 sixteenths and then on the back it's going to be uh, from the corner forward 5 sixteenths okay what we did is what my goal was is um, you can see this stringer right here is when the dash comes in when the dash comes in it should come pretty close to that stringer and come right up to it and um, your dash is going to glue to the front end of this piece here too it's going to be pull up into the top and glue up against that stringer and the face of this panel here okay and so i had to it, everything's a little trial and error and that my, my initial measurements i was giving you uh, it ended up being 3 16 cents deeper this way to allow this dash to um, hook up to the stringer there but anyway this installs very easily once we get to this point it's got the lip here um, i didn't show you earlier but i cut and leave about a quarter inch of a lip um, back this way but um, this just comes in this clears all the uh servo lines or the um the housings, the little housings for the servos, uh, servo, the, the cable lines, that's what it is. But I got that in place. Let's see here. I always use a little bit of tape. And pull that as far forward as we go and tape it. I, I'm taping it down temporarily. Okay. And so your cockpit's pretty much installed just like that. Uh, then you, um, on the dash, you do want to take the back of the dash. And I, um, here's a here's an earlier dash. In between these open areas here, you want to take put a piece of eighth inch balsa there, 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 and there. Just scrap, and all this comes up to be these little knobs on the back here come up to be about an eighth inch. And after you get that in there, you'll come back and, and lay this down on a piece of 16, I use 16th inch balsa, and traced around it, cut it out, and then glued that to the back. And that makes it nice and rigid and does not add a lot of weight to it. Anyway, you can come back, you can come in from the bottom or come in from this side to start off with, and um, just turn that dash around, and it should... Uh, pull right up into place and you can see the dash is easily installed in the end we'll end up gluing it just putting glue across the top and then on the front end of these uh, panels here so it'll glue in place all right um, the seat when you get the seat it will be um, you it'll it'll be all one one piece it won't I've cut all the flashing off and this seat sits right down on you can see the pedestal there the seat sits right down on the pedestal now what I have done is I have a pilot uh, I've show, showed a picture of the pilot in the um, on, on line on the thread but anyway this pilot here I have got it where it will sit um, in the seat now I'm not sure what pilot you will end up using. Um, there's probably several out there on the market that'll work fine, but this one fits almost perfectly according to the uh, the, the canopy. Um, just fits fine. Um, I made this pedestal to use this pilot. I made this pedestal one quarter inch low, so you'd need to take and add a piece of quarter inch balsa, real lightweight stuff, and just glue it to the top. And this seat will sit on there, 
and this curvature will follow the top of the um, cockpit here. And then this pilot will sit in there and he will be the right height and looks just perfect inside the, um, inside the canopy. Uh, this pilot does have legs, I just hadn't stuck them on yet. Um, but this cockpit's a very tight fit. Uh, it was a small cockpit area, but I do have a full one in there. Um, one other thing is there are two, there are two uh, resin sides for the cockpit. I have not um, painted these yet, but um, they will come and fit one will glue on each side. It'll fit right down on top and glue flat onto that, onto each pet piece. Now you will have to take, when you get it, and when, when it's poured, it makes a little bit of a lip up here. You'll take and just take that on a piece of sanding block, on a sanding block, and just sand it until it's flat across the bottom. Okay, and you just want it to be nice and flat so it glues to this um, panel here. All right, um, I do have mine primed right here. I, pr I pr use a black primer um, and it goes, one goes on that side and then the other one goes on the other side. Um, there, there is a, a throttle control. It'll come in here and it'll glue right, um, right to the side in there. I, I'm, I will, um, there's a couple more pieces I need to get together. I will, um, get the, uh, this one painted and I'll show you where everything goes and what it looks like and, and I'll be back. Okay guys, here we are back at the plane. <clears throat> I've got the cockpit all painted. If you look at the real cockpit, I looked it up, the whole thing was black. So you would really not get any good contrast to be able to see anything. So what I did, since it is a British plane, I went ahead and used an RAF uh, interior green. And I painted the whole thing that color to begin with. And then I came back and hand painted the, um, the stand, the um, platforms here uh, black. I just taped it off and painted those with a brush. Uh, I did um, paint the, um, the side pieces here. Those are resin. You need to make sure you wash them good with a um, good detergent soap to get, the, get um, the, the release agent off of them. You need to do those. Um, there's a, side, a box that goes on the side and also your throttle control. Um, with the throttle control, I'm, I'm putting a little a resin handle. You'll have to cut it off and then glue it onto the top. Um, it's kind of like the type of handle they used. Um, there will be several pins included that you can um, add to these knobs here. Um, there's a, uh, on the dash, there's a, a gauge here you can put a, a pin on. Um, but anyway, I've got, I've got this all painted up. I've got the seat painted. It's ready to go in place. Uh, the dash is painted. The gauges are in there. There is a video online that shows how I do all my painting and all my putting in my gauges and everything. Um, there is a gun sight. You just have to paint it. Um, one thing I did is I kind of, once I got the cockpit put in place, I marked, I took, first of all, took this gun sight before I drilled a hole in it and put a little bit of lighter colored paint on it and, and kind of made, found my location for it. Then I drilled a hole in the center of that location, came back, held the gun sight in place, and drilled back through so I could put a toothpick on there. That'll give you, that'll make it nice and rigid so you can glue it in place and, and the vibration just won't uh, shake it off. Okay, um, there's also a uh, joystick, and that's just been primed. And when you, uh, one thing, when you're shooting your primer, I use a black primer, that turns out to be my flat black. Uh, you need to shoot really light coats of it because you, you really glob it on, it won't look well. I just kind of go two or three really light coats over it and let it sit. And then if I didn't get it all covered good, I'll do it, I'll spray it again after it dries. Okay, um, let me go ahead and show you how this, go, this installs. It installs really quickly. Um, since the interior was black, I went ahead and left this black up here. Um, I did paint the side, the top of the side rails where they'll glue on black. Uh, you can see they're black here. But anyway, I'll just, this will just slides in very easily. You just come up from the bottom. This clears all the control cable parts in there. It just slides up in here and it just um, really just locks in place. All right, that just comes in there. 
the dash you can see that it's just right in place it's hard to see my lighting here um, but anyway the dash you just come up from the bottom on the inside and it just pulls into place and it's gonna be a little tight on this um, this cockpit here but we want it tight so it will so it holds everything in place and um, it, it doesn't have too big a seams but anyway I'm gonna pull that up it come pulls right up against this here Let's see if I can get some more light on this it pulls it pulls right up against the top here and it pulls up against that uh, stringer in there and it'll glue up against the um, the side panel here. But like I said, I know this is a little dark. There will be some pictures online. That pulls in. Then of course you got your gun sight that, that push, pushes right into that hole and we'll end up gluing it in place. All right, the joystick, I did drill a hole in the bottom of it. I put a toothpick and we'll push, I drilled a hole dead in the center and that pushes in place. You can see all that. Okay, then like I said, to use the pilot I planned on using, um, now this is just temporarily, this is a piece of a uh, quarter inch uh, ply, plywood. I'm gonna lay on top of the pedestal and then bring the seat, which has been cut out and painted and it'll sit right on there. And you can see this just comes right across, sits right across the top there. The only thing I had not added yet earlier was the headrest. You can see it here. Um, I'm gonna show you how it goes together, but it goes right there. All right, it's a two piece. You get this piece first. What you're gonna do is you're gonna come in here and you're gonna cut out a piece of eighth inch balsa that will fit in there. You want it to fit, what I do is I cut this real close and then I trace around the balsa and cut it to where it'll fit just right inside. Once you do that, you glue that piece of eighth inch balsa in there, press it all the way in, and then trim this. I just take scissors and trim it right along the balsa. And then I take a sanding block and I sand it until it's flush with the balsa all the way around. There'll be a piece of um, clear, uh, a piece of uh, white plastic in your kit. All you have to do is then glue that right down on the white plastic. I use CA on mine and then trim it. Because it, by the time you trim that off at eighth inch, this will be nice and 90 degrees. And just trim that to the back. And so you can't even tell my trim line. All right. And that'll make that thick and it'll, the balsa in there make it nice and rigid. Now the back piece here, you can see it comes up and it's a, it's a kind of a sharp angle here. And it's rounded at the top. What we're going to do is we're going to come in here. And we're going to remove this right up here. We're just going to take a 90 degree and go up, across, and down. And that's going to make uh, a 90 degrees uh, up each side and across and down. And then we're going to cut this off as close as we can to where it's got flat sides. But you need to make sure you're even all the way around. Then that, once you got it cut out, will be glued. I just use CA. I glued it to the back. All right, and then this will end up being glued right here in the center. It clears the canopy. Canopy goes on fine without touching it. All right, now one thing you may want to do if you're using a big gas motor is drill a hole like I have in the center here and, and drill in it and using a toothpick to give you, to make it um, a little bit stronger glued through into the, ba into the um, back of the fuselage there. All right, now, as before, I was telling you, these pilots, I will have those available through me. Um, they sit right in place. Now, they don't grab that joystick, but they um, there's not many pilots this size out there that can be found. I mean, y'all might be able to find one. But um, that all fits in, and it makes a nice, a real nice addition to the kit. Anyway, um, you just what you want to do is you want to glue this in place once you got it all set. You do need to support it across the bottom, just um, a couple stringers, maybe um, a quarter by a half, all the way across, touching each side of the fuselage, across the base of the cockpit kit itself. Um, that will give you some strength here, and also keep vibration from wearing this out over time. But anyway, um, the cockpit is really easy to put together. Um, it is, like I said, it is a very small cockpit area. It is a full cockpit. 
Um, uh, it's going to be available through VQ Warbirds. Um, you can always uh, order from them, or if you, if you have any questions about it, you can always get me through my website, tiesplanes.com. Uh, makes a great addition to the plane, and I hope you enjoy the kit.